Alrighty, Hosses, now that we got Burp Suite set up, configured exactly how we'd like, what we can do now is we can start attacking our target. So what's the first step in attacking a website? Well, the first thing that you should always do is make a sitemap. What is a sitemap? A sitemap is essentially just a visualization of the entire website structure. Once we have a sitemap, we can see all of the files, all the directories, the entire structure of how the website is laid out. Now in Burp Suite, the sitemap also involves a log of all of our requests and responses. In other words, anytime we go to a website, it's going to keep track of the requests and the responses and we can do some pretty cool things with those as you guys are going to see later on. Alright, so sitemaps sound fantastic. How do we make one? Well, the first thing that we can do, there's actually two different ways you can make them, either manually and automatically and if you use the spider then it'll crawl your site and do it automatically and I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second but for now I'll show you guys how to do it manually and some of the benefits of doing it manually so if you hop over to proxy make sure this little button intercept is off if it's on then what burp is gonna do is try to intercept every single request and it's annoying because then we have to go to a website then hop back here and back okay take this go back and forth and back and forth just keep it off for right now and I'll talk to you guys about in detail why you'd want that later so hop back into your browser and just start clicking links alright let's go to the user new page info page read a little bit of info alright let's hop back in burp and check it out so behind the scenes what burp is doing is it's trying to build a site map for you so this is the website and if we expand this we can see that right now it built one directory this is the main directory that all the files are in and we went to the info page the user new page and what it did is it logged our request this is our request right here and the servers response so this is their header information and all of the source code involved on that web page as well now one other thing I want to point out is if you guys were like alright that looks pretty cool but got a quick question here we only went to two web pages info and user new so what the heck is all this crap and why did it get automatically generated well behind the scenes what burp is doing whenever you go to a new web page is it's looking at that source code and it's pulling out all of the links so for example even though we didn't go to twitter or facebook or anything like that since this web page has links to those pages then it's gonna go in you know pretty much keep track of them log them and that is why you see that some of these links are gray that means that they were logged but you didn't go to it so that's the difference between black and gray links and also why a bunch of stuff is popping up that you may have thought um, what's going on here now another thing that you may want to do and I do this almost all the time is this you see all these links right here we really aren't concerned with these extra links right here this is our target this is the website that we're trying to attack hack into I really don't care about a sitemap for like Twitter and Google anything like that well anytime we wanna kinda clean this up what we can do is we can define our project scope in other words it's our way of telling Burp Suite hey this is the part of the internet that we really care about this website right here it's actually really easy if you right click the main root website you can click add to scope and now in your scope tab we can see that you now have a project scope in other words this like I said is where of telling burp these are the targets that we're most concerned of now if you go to sitemap then what you can choose to do is if you click this little white area this is your filter and you can say show only in scope items in other words show the stuff only if it's in our scope so if you click that and check it out it now only shows the website that we care about now let me just talk about this for one second again this is your filter in other words it says what do you want to see in your sitemap now a lot of the times these default settings are great because you really don't care about images or CSS because these types of files they don't really have a lot of vulnerabilities so there's no point in having them in their sitemap or logging their data so we can just see leave those unchecked and also if you have some types of files that you only want to log 
or some types of files that aren't included in here that you never want to see then you can adjust all your filter settings right here again pretty pretty self-explanatory I didn't need to talk you guys through all that so there you go the first thing that you always want to do is you want to start building a site map and define your target scope now if you're like okay this sounds like it's gonna be a lot of work generating a site map by going to every web page and clicking it manually why would I ever want to do that when I can just have an automated spider run and gather every link for me well here's the thing whenever you first start trying to hack into a website you usually want to avoid the sensitive areas at first for example if there's an admin panel or I don't know maybe some other sensitive area maybe some links that you don't want to click like a delete link or a logout link the spider isn't that smart so it's just gonna click every link try to submit every form and you're gonna be causing a lot of noise so that's why whenever you manually map an app application the web server is always gonna see you as just a normal person and it's very hard to detect that you're keeping this information and storing it and you also have complete control over exactly what link you want to click and you won't accidentally go into any dangerous areas so that of course is the benefit of manually creating a site map and before I end this video I should probably talk to you about this if you ever want to change your target scope then what you can do is you can go into your scope tab and you can either just delete this or if you want to add a new item to your scope maybe I don't know you're trying to hack into two websites you can do that as well so add let's see, add a new item edit remove these are all self-explanatory this load right here is if you already have a list of targets and you just want to load it in you can do that as well and also this scope is not just for your site map every single tool well, I don't want to say everyone but most all other tools in burp are gonna first check your scope before running those tools and what this prevents us from doing is attacking every single website that we visit it says okay for example if you want to scan for vulnerabilities then I'm gonna set up my scanner to only run test on this scope and again that prevents us from trying to attack the entire internet <laughs> because that probably wouldn't be a good idea so that's what you want to do whenever you start attacking a website for the very first time you first want to define the scope and then you want to start mapping it manually now once you have a pretty good overview of the site structure and the site's code then what we can do is we can use our spider to crawl the rest of it automatically and I'll show you guys how to do that in the next video